so yes dear friends uh, this is my lecture 2 in finite element method course so today i am going to tell how to derive shape function for 1d bar element using natural coordinate system in short natural coordinate system can be called as n dot c dot s okay so 1d bar element is also called as what two node element 1d bar also, 1d bar element can also be called as two node element okay so first let me write down the sketch of for what 1d bar element so first let me write down the sketch for 1d bar element okay i hope in the last lecture i have explained how to draw this 1d bar element sketch so zeta is equal to 0 here so this is node 1 this is node 2 at node 1 zeta will be minus 1 at node 2 zeta will be plus 1 okay guys again if i assume this distance as x1 and this distance as x2 so what will be this distance so one can easily say that if this is x2 and this is x1 so this will be x2 minus x1 is equal to length of the element so i am going to consider this x2 minus x1 as length of the element so why i am using zeta because the derivation is been asked in the natural coordinate system so that is the reason i am using one of the natural coordinate system here okay fine so coming to the explanation consider consider a one dimensional one dimensional bar element bar element having two nodes 1 and 2 okay so at each node at each node at each node there will be 1 degree of freedom so what is the meaning of 1 degree of freedom at each node only one displacement is allowed so that is the reason what i am going to tell that at each node there will be 1 degree of freedom let u1 and u2 be the displacement displacement at node 1 and 2 respectively similarly n1 and n2 be the shape functions shape functions shape functions at node 1 and 2 respectively okay see now first we have to consider the boundary conditions what so first we have to consider the boundary conditions so what are the boundary conditions see by considering the by considering the boundary conditions so first see here friends first i'll explain the boundary conditions so at node 1 at node 1 zeta will be minus 1 and at node 2 zeta will be plus 1 and at node 1 at node 1 n1 will be 1 at node 2 n2 will be 1 okay see here first i would like to consider the boundary condition 
by considering the boundary condition uh, otherwise here guys at node 1 u will be u1 at node 2 u will be u2 displacement okay so first i have to consider the my first boundary condition is see here guys once again i am going to tell the boundary condition at node 1 u will be u1 and zeta will be minus 1 at node 2 u will be u2 and zeta will be plus 1 right okay yes okay see now i have to assume one displacement model i have to assume what displacement model assuming displacement model in the form of in the form of what see here guys so what i am going to assume here is my displacement model which is in the form of what u is equal to a naught plus a1 zeta okay so why i am using zeta here see here friends in the last class i mean in, in in my last lecture i have considered this displacement model as a naught plus a1 x why i am replaced x by zeta is because derivation is asked in natural coordinate system so that is the reason i had replaced x by zeta here okay so i am going to call this as equation 1 or even you guys can consider or even you guys can consider alpha 1 plus alpha 2 zeta also okay so either any one of the two equations you guys can consider okay so okay next is what see guys now i will be you know considering the boundary conditions now i will be considering the boundary conditions here at node 1 at node 1 what are my boundary conditions u will be u1 right at node 1 u will be u1 and zeta will be zeta will be minus 1 am i right and zeta will be minus 1 at node 2 what are my boundary conditions at node 2 at node 2 at node 2 uh, at node 2 u will be u2 u will be u2 and zeta will be plus 1 so i am going to call this as boundary condition a and this as b see guys here either any one of the equation i can consider okay in the last lecture i have considered this one but in this lecture i am going to consider the first equation as my first equation okay so don't get confused here i written r either any one of the equation you can consider okay first let me substitute these two boundary condition in equation one so what is my first equation equation one is u is equal to a naught plus a1 zeta so this is my first equation what is my boundary condition a boundary condition a is what at u will be u1 and zeta will be minus 1 right so i am going to substitute these values here so wherever u is there i am going to write u1 a naught minus wherever zeta is there i am going to substitute minus 1 so a1 into a1 into minus 1 so it means what minus a1 so i am going to call this as equation 2 now i will be substituting substituting boundary condition b in equation 1 so this is my first equation so in this equation i am going to substitute boundary condition b what is my boundary condition b boundary condition b is u will be u2 and zeta will be plus 1 okay so in this equation i am going to substitute these boundary conditions u will be u2 okay so a naught plus a1 into zeta means 1 so a1 into 1 means 1 only so i am going to call this equation as 3 here okay see what i will be doing next is c 
here is students so next i am going to add equation 2 and 3 adding equation 2 and 3 okay so what is my equation 2 and 3 so u1 plus u2 is equal to a0 plus a1 plus a0 minus a1 okay correct so if i simplify this equation i will be getting what a1 a1 goes away so 2a0 so u1 plus u2 see here guys in the last lecture i have clearly told here in my first equation my aim is to determine the constants a0 and a1 so that is the reason i am going to find out what is a0 from this equation so u1 plus u2 divided by 2 is my first constant value okay so next what i will be doing is so next i have to calculate you know a1 so how to calculate a1 what i will be doing is i will be substituting this a not in equation 2 i will be substituting this a not in equation 2 substituting substituting a not value in equation 2 okay so what is my equation 2 equation 2 is u1 is equal to a not minus a1 so what is a not u1 plus u2 divided by 2 minus a1 and u1 so what i want guys from this equation i want a1 a1 i am going to bring towards my left side okay so u1 plus u2 divided by 2 Minus u1. Okay. See here, guys. So here I'll be taking LCM. Now here I'll be taking what LCM. Okay. Fine. Okay. See here. Here I'm going to take the LCM. So u1 plus u2 divided by 2. So if nothing is there, one is going to there. So minus two u one. Am I right? Minus two u one. So thus this equation is reduces to what? So u two minus u one divided by two. Am I right? So how is this? You see here minus two u one plus u one. So minus u one and this u two is as it is. So u two minus u one. I have got the second constant value and I am going to call this equation as. Equation five. So this is two, guys. This is two. Okay. Now I'll be substituting a not and a one values first equation. Now I'm going to substitute a not and a one values in equation one. Substituting. So next is what? Next is substituting a not and a one. Values in equation one. Okay, so what is my equation one? Equation one is u is equal to a not plus a one zeta. Okay, so fine. What is a not? See here. What is a not? A not is u one plus u two by two. U one plus u two divided by two plus a one means here it is there a one value. U two minus U one divided by two into zeta. Okay, guys. See here. Now what I'll be doing is next is I'm going to simplify the terms. Okay. So yes, this will be uh, so. Yeah. First, this I'm going to write this term as it is. Okay. Plus. So here I'm going to multiply this zeta. I'm going to multiply this zeta to this term, u2 zeta minus u1 zeta. Okay. So since 2 to is there, so I'm going to take LCM as 2. So u1 plus u2 plus u2 zeta minus u1 zeta. Okay. Fine. So next, what I'll be doing is I'll segregate u1 and u2 guys. I'm going to segregate u1 and u2 friends. So if I take u1 as common. U1 into 
वन माइनस जीटा डिवाइडेड बाय टू यू टू इनटू वन प्लस जीटा डिवाइडेड बाय टू सी यू वन यू वन इज देर इफ आई टेक यू वन एस कॉमन वन माइनस जीटा दिस डिवाइडेड बाय टू एस इट इज यू टू प्लस यू टू जीटा इज देर इफ आई टेक यू टू एस कॉमन वन प्लस जीटा बाय टू सो दस आई एम गोइंग टू कॉल दिस इक्वेशन एस इक्वेशन नंबर सिक्स नाउ द फील्ड वेरिएबल इज सो वी नो दैट द फील्ड वेरिएबल इज व्हाट यू इज इक्वल टू एन वन यू वन प्लस एन टू यू टू सो कंपेयर इक्वेशन सिक्स एंड सेवन कंपेयर इक्वेशन सिक्स एंड सेवन सो एनीबडी कैन इजीली टेल आर एनीबडी कैन इजीली फाइंड आउट दी यू नो एन वन सो व्हाट इज एन वन हियर सो एन वन इज इक्वल टू वन माइनस जीटा बाई टू ओके बिकॉज यू वन यू वन इन बी एज इट इज एन वन मीन्स वन माइनस जीटा बाई टू एंड एन टू मीन्स वॉट वन प्लस जीटा बाई टू ओके दस वी हैव सक्सेसफुली यू नो डन दी डेरिवेशन ऑफ फाइंडिंग शेफ फंक्शन फॉर वन डी बार एलिमेंट सो दीज आर माई शेफ फंक्शन ओके so as i already told in my previous lecture we have to write down the variation of shear functions otherwise we are we will be losing some marks guys so that is the reason now i will be writing the variation of shear functions see here so see here i know that at node 1 If this is node one, this is node two. At node one, n one will be one. At the same time, at node two, n one will be zero. Okay, and what is this value? So this value is n one is equal to one minus zeta by two. So my first shear function. So variation of the second one is. So this is first node and this is second node. So very. shear function n2 is 1 at node 1 at the same time n2 at node 1 is 0 and this value is n2 is equal to 1 plus zeta by 2 okay guys so you know thus completes the derivation of 1d bar element derivation of shear function for 1d bar element using you know natural coordinate system i hope uh, friends you have understood so thank you for watching thank you